Um, so we have a question coming in here. So um, this one's to do with writing assignments. So in terms of that mentality, um, do you guys run writing assignments on uh, your, uh, it says truck, but I think uh, engine and truck um, to use terminology that uh, you'd likely uh, be using. Um, is that written into your SOPs in terms of uh, your arrival? And does that help with people's mentality knowing um, what they're gonna do when they get there? And have you noticed any change in the different generations? Is that more or less helpful with newer firefighters? The, lots of stuff there. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Um, so uh, we run dedicated engine and ladder company operations, meaning that um, uh, with the exception of very rare events, engine companies stretch hose lines and put out fires, and that's what their vehicles are built for. They are built, they, they are pretty simple hose, water, firefighter kind of vehicles. And the ladder companies do ladder work. They do the search and the ventilation and that kind of stuff. And, and their vehicles are not oriented around hose lines. They are oriented around ladders and saws and that kind of stuff. So the company operations all mirror those assignments. So like an engine company typically is gonna ride three people and the riding assignments are obviously the driver, officer, and the firefighter. And, and that's pretty simple. I mean, the firefighter is going to stretch the attack line and then the officer on a three person engine company pretty much ends up being a little bit of the backup firefighter also. And then yes, on the ladder company, um, we, you know, driver, we, we usually try to ride four, but if there are staffing problems, um, then we might end up with three people on the rescue or the ladder, but they are supposed to have four people. So they're on our, on our ladder companies, um, on a residential building three stories or below they will split into an inside and outside team so the the outside team will consist of the driver and the outside vent firefighter and their job is um, horizontal and vertical ventilation ves if appropriate um, egress issues like window bars or that kind of stuff and and utilities and basically all the outside truck work um, and the inside team is the officer and the irons firefighter, and their job is to force the door for the engine, locate the fire, um, do a primary search from the area of most danger to least, and then open up the walls and ceilings for extension. Um, and so all of that will happen automatically unless somebody tells them not to. Um, and that all gets coupled actually with our um, with our, uh, our, our structure fire assignments. So actually, if you kind of give me a second here and don't mind me looking away from the camera, I'll see if I can't pull them up and put it on the camera here. But um, every apparatus that is dispatched on our first alarm has a predetermined assignment, meaning that they have a job that they are expected to do, and that job will happen automatically um, unless somebody intervenes. And it is very successful. Um, I'm just, you know, we had a fire at about six o'clock this morning and I'm missing the second fire right now. Um, they're on another, another working fire right now. So I can tell you it works because they did it twice today. Um, but if I can switch over here, then you should be able to kind of see a little bit of our predetermined assignment. Um, so this kind of gives you an idea how all this comes together is because the, the, firefighter's job is relevant in context of their apparatus job, right? So if I am the first in engine company, then, well, pretty obviously, if I'm the firefighter, I know I'm going to be stretching an attack line. And so the whole way, the, the, kind of as this relates to the combat ready kind of thing, the whole, the whole way to the fire, all I'm thinking about is I'm going to stretch the attack line. I'm going to stretch the attack line. I'm going to stretch the attack line. So when somebody goes on scene and they're giving their size up information um, or anything else that they hear on the radio, like if I'm the first, first do engine nozzle firefighter, everything I hear, I'm thinking about in context of stretching that attack line. Oh, it's a two story fire in the rear. I probably ought to be thinking about the 200 foot cross lay or maybe the 250. Oh, it's a one story fire, fires in the front. I might pull a 150 foot bumper line, right? So I'm, I'm thinking about all that kind of stuff. If, if I am the um, second do ladder company um, outside vent, right? Well, I know second do truck, I'm gonna be assisting the, the, the outside team of the first do truck. All right, they said it's a two-story house 
and the fire is on the first floor. Well, I'm probably not going to need to ventilate the roof because it's below the top floor. So I'm going to need to think about maybe VESing that second floor though. So I'm kind of making up a bunch of different scenarios there in my head. But the point is, is that when everybody knows what their job is going to be, they spend the whole way going to the fire thinking about what am I going to do to complete that job? What do I need to complete that job? Um, and that's different because like when I started in the volunteers in the 90s, um, actually like 20, what is, I don't know what year it is, but 27 years ago today, actually, um, I started in the volunteers and I would remember I'd go to a fire and you would look like, well, I'd be thinking a little about everything. Okay, well, if I get there and they want me to stretch an attack line, then, I, then I'll do this, this, and that. But wait a minute, they might say go to the roof. So if they say go to the roof, then I need to do this a little bit. But well, what if they don't say that? What if they say throw ladders? Well, then I'm going to need to take this ladder to this place. And so instead of being mission-oriented or task-oriented, I was thinking like a little bit about a lot of things and never completely prepared for what I was going to do. Or the other, I, the other thing that would happen is the front lawn surprise. Right, you, you got no idea what you're coming into. You got no idea what you're going to do there. So you're going to the fire like this. All right, I wonder what's going to happen. I can't wait to see what's going on when I get there. Okay, it sounds like we're there. It sounds like they're there. And then all of a sudden you're on the front lawn and they're like, vent the roof. And that's the first time you've heard what your job is going to be. And so now, you know, 20 feet and 30 seconds away from doing what you just got assigned to do, now you get to start to think about planning and preparing for doing that. And that is that by definition, substantially less preparation and planning than if I'm able to go down the street, you know, thinking about this and thinking about what my plan is going to be. If 